Good afternoon, Suzanne. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm really, really excited about this one. And we're going to be talking about sustainability today, which I know is really close to your heart. So why don't we get started by you telling us um, a bit about yourself and a bit about your role? So my name is Susanna Baker. I'm Associate Director for Climate, Environment and Sustainability at Tech UK. Um, and Tech UK is essentially a business organisation for um, companies in the tech sector. And what we do is really guided by them. Uh, we create a space, a non-competitive space, where we can bring the sector together to address and debate um, issues of, of common concern. So at the moment, this is covering everything from ensuring electricals um, and electronics are reused um, and recycled properly at the end of life to sharing best practice around circular economy design um, to creating the conditions in the UK so that emerging climate tech um, in the um, emerging from the, the digital sector can fulfill its best potential um, and we're obviously doing a lot to, to support our members in navigating the challenges of leaving the European Union as well so they're the kind of priorities for us at the moment but it but it changes. I bet it does that sounds interesting and out of what you just shared with me what would you say is the biggest challenge that you are trying to solve? Um, well, it has to be, um, I think, the, the transition to a net zero um, economy. Um, um, it's obviously the, the biggest challenge of our time. We've got to redesign everything um, um, from, from um, a systems point of view. Um, and that's obviously incredibly difficult, challenging, involves loads of stakeholders, it needs a lot of discussion, testing, innovation. Um, so this is, I think, the biggest problem, but also one of the most exciting ones at the moment. Brilliant. Yeah, that sounds sounds about right, doesn't it? And I, I actually read the report that Tech UK um, brought out, I think it was with Deloitte back end of last year. And you talk a lot about the impact that digital tech can have um, on that. Could you just elaborate a little bit of me for me? Because obviously that's from a Microsoft perspective and the area that I'm really passionate about, found it really interesting. Yeah, so the report we did with Deloitte last year um, focused on part, we tried to get some data to really understand the potential of digital technology in enabling um, climate um, action in the UK. And what we found is that digital technologies already in the field can enable um, a third of the emission reductions that we need in the UK by 2030. And that was only the technologies that we know um, are working and are being deployed at the moment. And there's just so many additional use cases that um, what, are being sorry, tested at the moment. What type of technologies? Are you so saying? things like um, smart uh, grid um, technologies that uh, the um, players in the energy industry are already using um, things like traffic calming measures so smart traffic lights um, to um, um, some precision farming applications uh, home energy management systems and um, some um, industrial applications within manufacturing um, so those are the ones that we know are already being used um, I think some of the more exciting use cases for that, that have yet to be proven that we're quite excited about is actually how different technologies come together. Mm. Um, so for example, how smart charging can help to herd demand by consumers when they're looking to charge their vehicles. If we all decide to charge our vehicles at the same time, if we move when we move to electric vehicles um, en masse, then there's a real risk that the grid will yeah. fall over. But if we can send price signals through our smart grids, through smart energy systems, um, then we can uh, essentially direct people to uh, charge their vehicles in an orderly way when uh, there is uh, loads of uh, low cost, low carbon um, energy on the system. Uh, and it's things like that that we get very excited about. <laughs> that truly is very exciting. So would you say energy is the one where you 
your your passion lies? I think it's an area where we're really um, engaged with at the moment. And partly, I think that's because they've reached a certain maturity in their decarbonisation plans. And they have very much recognised that a digital energy system is absolutely vital to manage a distributed energy system. Um, but we're also working on um, uh, mobility. So at TechEK, we're running um, the um, data and privacy um, uh, group um, that's been formed under the Electric Vehicle Task Force, Energy Task Force. And again, that's another sector with clear timelines and, and an emerging maturity on how they're intending to decarbonise. I think as we start to see other sectors really think about their decarbonisation path, we're likely to get more and more involved um, with them as well as they understand the potential of digital technology in helping to to support them in their journey to net zero. And what I'm hearing, there's different maturity in the different sectors. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think I think I mean, we know in the UK, the energy sector have done uh, more than most in decarbonising um, um, and uh, that's where the bulk of emission reductions have occurred to date. Uh, we also have a you know, really clear path for, for transport, but for, for other sectors, probably less so buildings, um, I think that's still being considered um, uh, and we're expecting to see lots of strategies on this um, coming out this year. Um, and I think another kind of important areas around um, industry, particularly those hard to decarbonise sectors um, and, um, and of course, um, behaviour change, yeah. uh, which is going to become even more important. I'm, I'm convinced that digital technology has got a really important role to play there too. Yeah, so there's two points that you touched on. Um, one was data a little bit earlier, which I'd like to pick up, and then the behaviour change, we get on to, the, to that later. So data is obviously super important in all of this because we, we can't manage what we can't measure. We, we know all of that, but it's a real challenge, isn't it? The, the management and or the measurement even of accurate data. Yeah, it's a huge challenge. And it's for that reason um, that we have suggested that as part of the national data strategy that DCMS are working on at the moment, uh, that's our um, a government department for uh, digital in the UK. Uh, we really want to see net zero being uh, a central challenge within that data strategy. Um, we think data is absolutely vital in the transition to net zero. Uh, what we're seeing is lots of uh, really great data strategies emerging in the energy space. I, I mentioned the one that's being explored in the mobility space. We know the water sector is also looking at it. What we don't want is these data uh, strategies to be developed in silos because yeah. if we're going to be, um, you know, the complexities of moving to net zero requires a systems approach to managing this transition and that will inevitably mean that we need the very best data to inform um, decision making. Uh, to provide robust verification uh, around the actions that other people take yeah. um, and to actually optimise and organise ourselves best. Um, we're also really excited about, about the role of digital twins to help us take that data and perform very high quality simulations to support um, um, decision making. Um, but we need to layer those uh, information sources together to get a really accurate systems uh, um, uh, view really. Um, so absolutely important that we design our data sets uh, for interoperability and that they're um, housed and governed in a way that is acceptable to society. Uh, we know that um, people are worried about the use yeah. of data so that's absolutely vital that we get a really strong governance structure around that data from the very beginning. Yeah yeah that's always one of the big um, Issue sounds negative, but it's just it's of great importance, isn't it, that, that we're open about how we deal with data and what we do with it and how it's being shared. However, the, the real benefit will lie in sharing the data and mashing it up and actually modeling it. So that's great. And as you could hear, this is live from my um, office. So my daughter just commented on the video game she's playing. <laughs> um, so I wanted to touch on the last point, and that is really the behavior change aspect. Because for me personally, I always find the more I learn and the more I read, there is no way you go back to your old behaviours. 
So, so what are your thoughts on it and what is sort of the one tip that you could get, give listeners um, yeah, to start? Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because I suppose one of the reasons why I got uh, interested in policies um, and sustainability policy was because it enables change without people having to do very much at all. Um, but as we know, this is uh, this will only work to, to, a, to a point. Um, and the Committee on Climate Change has rightly pointed out that we really absolutely need to start changing the way we behave. And for me at home, um, that's about buying renewable energy, um, mm. traveling less, buying more durable products, clothing um, to mm. electronics, re reusing, recycling, um, um, not just you know our packaging, um, but, but our but everything we can. Um, and of course, um, eating less meat is becoming increasingly important too. Um, but I think at work, the biggest way we can all make a difference, whether we're working in sustainability or not, is to um, encourage our places of work to adopt a science-based target. Um, so that's a, a climate target based um, and framed around the Paris Agreement. Um, and um, we know that there's a big push from the COP26 presidency to get as many businesses signed up to a science based target um, in, in the run up to the talks in Glasgow this year. And I think that every employee, uh, regardless of where they work, can, can try and encourage their um, uh, employers to, to move in this direction. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Susanna. That was absolutely brilliant. Um, all the best with everything and stay in touch. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.